hi everyone welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to tell you what i have learned on my day 2 of 100 days of aws challenge all right so i have written my notes and that is available in the github repository so i will make sure to drop the link to this github repository in the description box below so what and all i have studied i have made sure that uh, i have added the you know picture of that in the description and also uh, um, uh, topics covered everything is uh, available here you can visit this website for uh, you know understanding what i have uh, gone through all right so let me go to my presentation so i have added the same notes in my presentation we'll discuss over there all right so as i already said this is my day 2 of 100 days of uh, aws challenge so you can also join me in this journey by looking into whatever i have learned you can also follow that and just you know we can learn together all right so it is completely free okay so today what i learned is uh, about virtual private clouds or vpcs so basically it is a service that is used to create private networks inside aws that other private services will run from basically other private resources as in your ec2 instances your elastic beanstack your ecs all those things uh, will run will come under vpc basically you can create those resources under your virtual private clouds so you can say that it is a virtual network inside aws okay so it is also used to connect your aws private network with your on premises so let's say you have your on premises environment and you want to connect that to your aws cloud then you need to create a vpc that is must and should needed all right so this is just a basic uh, things that i gone through today so there are a lot more about uh, vpcs but this is just a basic okay so as i already told a vpc is a virtual network inside aws all right so and another thing is vpcs are regional resilient so if you do not know what is resilient uh, regional resilient i've talked about this in the, my day one video so i will drop the link to that day one video in the description box below you can know what is regional resilient global resilient and easy resilient so to just give you the gist of what is regional resilient generally what happens so this service that vpc will continue to operate you know even if the az fails let's say your availability zone fails so this vpc will operate but if the entire region goes down then it will not operate that is the meaning of regional resilient okay so a, a vpc is within one account and one region so for every region there will be a separate vpc okay so as i already told you it is a private and it is a isolated unless you make it public it it won't be public anymore all right so it is always private unless you decide to make that as private okay so let uh, let me give you one more scenario so let's say inside an e vpc you created two ec2 instances so will those instance can connect to each other or talk to each other answer is yes so those resources can talk to each other if the v if the resources inside vpc inside the same vpc then they can speak to each other speak as in connect with each other but if the resources are in other vpcs then they cannot talk so that is what i have mentioned here so if you see this block here so that is the meaning of that okay so let me take my laser so if you see resources in other vpcs cannot talk resources in the same vpc can talk so this is very important okay and there are two types of vpc basically one is default vpc and the other one is custom vpc as the name itself says default vpc it will be created by aws itself when you create an account default vpc will be automatically created okay so what aws does is it will create one vpc per region so let's say you have us east one us east two there are many regions right 
so what aws does is it will create vpc in all the regions one vpc per all the regions okay so you can also create your custom vpcs okay so you can add uh, uh, multiple custom vpcs you can create and you can design your architecture okay so custom vpcs are 100 percent private so until and unless you make them as private uh, sorry uh, public it is always private custom vpcs are always private so default vpcs are created by aws uh, i already told that it will be created by aws itself and one more thing is that vpc has got cider classless interdomain routing so we will see this in the console uh, i will log into my aws console and show you what is the cider uh, and all okay so basically uh, if you do not know what is cider it just you know defines the start and end range of your ip addresses so for all the ip addresses it will there will be a starting uh, starting point and there will be an ending point right so cider is uh, just you know start and end range of your ip addresses okay so custom vpcs cannot get multiple cider ranges sorry can get default vpcs cannot get multiple cider ranges but custom vpcs can get multiple cider ranges so let's say your first cider range is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 let's say another cider block is 192.168.0.0 slash 16 so you can add both the cider ranges to your custom vpcs but it is not possible in the default vpc because default vpc comes with the predefined cider range and you cannot change that so the default vpc cider range is 172.31.0.0 slash 16 and this is created by aws itself okay so it can have only one cider range okay so as i told you it provides resilience by adding subnets there is something called as subnets basically you divide the entire vpc into small network units called subnets sub networks okay so and that will be available in all the availability zone and one more thing that we need to note here is that aws is going to create one subnet per one availability zone let's say in case in case of us east one the us east one north virginia region so there are six availability zone so what aws does is it will create six subnets in uh, that particular region whereas in if you go with us east 2 that is i think ohio so in that particular region what it aws do is uh, they have only have three availability zone so it will create only three subnets so what i mean to say is aws will create one subnet per one az okay in case of default vpc whereas in custom vpc you can create how much ever uh, subnets you want okay so that is what i have given in the diagram also so if you see so we have subnets and i have divided uh, this entire vpc vpc cider is this one so this is the cider that uh, i have you know uh, uh, subnet cider that is defined us is 2a 2b 2c right so these are the this is a diagrammatic representation of that okay so the next thing uh, i just make sure that uh, there are few facts that i got to know and i've just made sure that i added at the uh, end okay so one important thing as we already discussed there will be one vpc per region and it can be removed and cre recreated previously what what was happening is if you by chance delete the default vpc what used to happen you should create a support request to aws and then they would create your default vpc but right now you can create again back your default vpcs okay so another thing is default vpc cider is always 172.31.0.0 slash 16 and you cannot change that okay so slash 20 subnet in each az in a region so all the subnets that create will have the slash 20 okay so by default IGW means Internet Gateway, Security Groups and Network ACLs are also created 
by default when you create an account the default vpc gets created along with the default vpc these are the things that are getting created so do not worry about them what are these and all so we will be going through them in the uh, later part of the lectures okay so subnets assign public ipv4 addresses by default and this is very important you might get a question in the exam also not a direct question but indirect question okay so this is what i gone through now let us go back to our console and verify how the architecture of vpc is designed okay so let me go back to my console so i've logged into my aws console so to look for vpc you can search for vpc in this global search bar here so you will the first service is vpc open that so it is just you know isolated cloud resources so if you want to see how many vpcs are uh, generated you can check that okay so now i am in my north virginia region that is us east one as i told in the theory so every region will have one default vpc by 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 default right so if i go to your vpc section so if you see this is the only vpc that i have and this is my default vpc how will i know whether it is the default vpc or not so by looking into the cider right so we spoke about this also in the lecture if you see 172.31.0.0/16 so if you see here it is 172.31.0.0 and this is a default vpc and so as i have known so this particular north virginia region has got six availability zone so you might get six available subnets also okay so let me go to subnets all right so if you see you can see six subnets here right so these are the subnets that are getting created by default okay so in north virginia region you do not get confused in north virginia region there are six availability zone so in each availability zone one subnet is getting created all right so if you see the cider it is slash 20 so that is what we discussed here right subnets oh sorry slash 20 subnet in each availability zone in a region right so this is what i learned today as a day two so we'll continue to do so in the future also tomorrow i'm going to learn about ec2 basics of ec2 so i'm also going to record a video and upload it in into my channel so if you are liking the content that what i'm sharing across please subscribe to the channel comment down below what you want to see next and also share it among your friends thank you